Hey guys, Jake here coming at you with another math problem today. Continuing on with some related rates problems, this is the one we're going to be going over today. So the problem we have is a street light is mounted at the top of a 15 foot tall pole. A man six feet tall walks away from the pole with a speed of five feet per second along a straight path. How fast is the tip of his shadow moving when he is 40 feet from the pole? So just like all the other related rates problems I've done on my channel, we're gonna go through the same four step process to solve this related rates problem. The first step is to draw a picture of what you have going on. Really any math problem, it's a good idea when you have a word problem to draw out what's being described. So let's start with that. So this pretty much sums up all the information we're given. Um, you know, basically we have this man uh, at the moment that we're looking at, he's 40 feet away from the pole. Uh, we know the pole is 15 feet tall. The man is six feet tall. And we know the man is walking away from the pole at a speed of five feet per second. So that's really all the information we're given. I did also add in a couple other things, which is labeling this side length from the pole to the man. That distance is going to be called Y. I decided to label the distance from the man to the tip of his shadow. So basically that would represent the length of his shadow. That is designated as X. And then I just called this entire distance between the pole all the way to the tip of his shadow as Z. So the reason why I labeled these three things, X, Y, and Z, is because we do want to kind of designate a variable to the different measurements that are changing over time. As this man walks away from the pole, we know the distance between him and the pole is going to increase. We know the length of his shadow is going to increase because the shadow is always the tip of the shadow is always going to be on the straight line from the light to the top of his head and then on. So if the man moves to over here, this line would then go further out, touching the tip of his head over here, and it would continue on further out, right? So it would do something like this if the man was standing over here. So you could see that that length X would be longer. The length between the man and the pole, which is Y, would be longer. And as a result, this total length, which represents the distance from the pole to the tip of the shadow, Z, would also be longer. So this is a pretty good drawing of what we're gonna be dealing with. So the second step in any related rates problem is to come up with your equation. And actually there's kind of a couple of different equations that we wanna consider in this problem. You know, it's really kind of a good idea when you're doing a related rates problem to just kind of jot down any relevant equations that kind of match up with the shapes that you're dealing with. Obviously in this case, we have triangles. We could imagine the man is, you know, just the side of a triangle right here, just a straight line up and down. Obviously this pole is a straight line. So we have basically two right triangles. One is contained within the other one. They both share this angle here. So since we know that these two triangles share this angle and these other two sides, so this side here and this side here are on the same line as each other, right? So this side of the big triangle is on the same line as this side of the little triangle. And then similarly, this big triangle bottom side is on the same line as this small side on the small triangle. So each side on the small triangle corresponds with a side on the large triangle. And the angles of the triangles are the same, right? This angle here is the same as this angle here. That's just kind of a, a trick from geometry if you remember uh, taking geometry. What that tells us is that the small triangle and the large triangle are similar triangles. So what that tells us is we can create fractions basically from the side length of the triangles that correspond with each other. What that means is we could take for example the small side of the small or this lower side of the small triangle over this left side of the small triangle. And that would be equivalent to the corresponding bottom side on the big triangle, which would be Z, over the corresponding left side of the big triangle. So that's just one example of what the fact that these are similar triangles tells us. We could do that with any two sides between these two triangles. We could do it with the hypotenuses as well. Uh, these lower sides, left sides, 
but we don't really have any information about the hypotenuse of either the small triangle or the large triangle. So thinking about what I just wrote over there for a second, you know, really with a related rates problem, when you're coming up with the equation, you want to think about what you're looking for. Well, in this case, we're trying to figure out how fast the tip of this man's shadow is moving. So basically, as this man walks away and this point on the triangle moves out in this direction, we want to figure out how fast that point is moving. Well, if you're measuring the speed of a specific point or object or whatever the thing is that's moving that you're trying to measure how fast it's going, what you're really doing is measuring how quickly the distance between that point and some stationary point that that thing is moving away from, how quickly that distance is changing. So in other words, we know this pole is not moving, it's stationary. So the speed of the tip of the shadow would be obtained by figuring out the rate of change of this, this length here, right? The distance between this point on the triangle and this stationary light pole. The rate of change of that distance is gonna be exactly the speed of the tip of the shadow. So that would be represented by dz dt, right? Because this side length from here to here is z. So the rate of change of that side length is what we're looking for. If we can find dz dt, that will be our answer. However, we need to make sure to express that in terms of things that we actually know. If we continue on and say that this is our equation and go on to the implicit differentiation step from there, what we're going to end up with is there's going to be a dz dt somewhere in there, which obviously that's what we're looking for. So it's OK that we don't know that there's also going to be a dx dt in there, which we don't really have any information about. Right. We don't know how quickly this distance here is changing. What we have information about is y and dy dt. We know how fast the man is moving, so we know how quickly the distance between the pole and the man is changing right? Y is increasing at a rate of five feet per second. But we don't know how fast X is changing. So it would be better if we could express our equation in terms of Y instead of X. So we also know that it's okay to use Z. So it's okay to use Z. It's okay to use Y. It's okay to use any other constant side length that we have like for example we know the man is six feet tall that's not going to change that's a constant it's okay to use that in there we know the pole is 15 feet tall that's not going to change so that's okay but we don't really want to use x because we don't really have any information about the rate of change of x so what we want to do is think about how can we express x in terms of y and z well we know that x plus y equals z right if we add these two side lengths together, they're gonna to give us z. So what we can do is solve this equation for x, and that'll leave us with x in terms of y and z, which we can then put into this equation. So let's do that. All we have to really do is subtract y to the other side, and we get x equals z minus y. So we already figured out that z and y are both okay to use in our equation. So what we can do is take this and replace x in this equation with that. Basically, we're just gonna get rid of our x and we're gonna write z minus y instead. So now this is a perfectly good equation to use because it only has variables that we know about their rate of change and constants. So this is a perfect equation to use. Before we go on to the third step though, let's think about how we could maybe simplify this equation a little bit because, you know, having two fractions equal to each other is kind of a pain when we start taking derivatives. So what we can do is actually cross multiply. So we'll multiply that times that. So z minus y times 15 and six times z and the result would be equivalent to each other. So 15 times z minus y is gonna be equivalent to six times z. We can distribute our 15. So that'll give us 15 z minus 15 y equals 6z. We can add 15y to both sides, subtract 6z from both sides, and so those will cancel, that will cancel with that, and we'll be left with 15z minus 6z would be 9z equals 15y. 
So now we have a really simple equation that we can go ahead and apply implicit differentiation to, to find the dz dt that we're looking for. So taking the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to time is gonna be pretty straightforward. All we need to do is make sure to treat z and y both as functions of time. A constant times some function, if you're taking the derivative of that, the result is just gonna be the constant times the derivative of that function. So our constants are just gonna remain and we're just gonna have nine times dz dt equals 15 times dy dt. dz dt is just the derivative of z with respect to time and dy dt is just the derivative of y with respect to time. So now we can just solve this equation for our desired rate of change, which is the fourth and final step of an a related rates problem. So to do that, all we have to do, divide both sides by nine, dz dt equals 15 times dy dt over 9. And then we already know that dy dt, that was given uh, in the equation, that was just, y was just the distance between the man and the light pole. So the dy dt is just how quickly that distance is changing, which is just how fast the man is walking. The man was walking five feet per second. So dy dt is five. Now, if we simplify this down, that's just going to tell us that dz dt equals 25 over three feet per second, which is how fast the distance between the tip of the shadow and the pole is changing, which is how fast the tip of the shadow is moving. So I hope that video was helpful. If it was, and you'd like to support the channel, a like and subscribe would be a huge help to me. I really appreciate the support. So see you next time.